Welcome back, welcome back, everybody. Hello, hello, welcome back. Are you ready for your class? Is everybody ready for their class? Hey, Marco, welcome. Hello, Juan, welcome. Hello, Marita. Good evening, teacher. Hey, good evening. How are you today? I'm good, and you? Very good, excellent. Ready for the class? Yes, ready. Good evening, teacher. Hey, good evening, Fernando. How are you? Fine, fine. I uh, drive to my house, but it's okay. okay. All right. Excellent. Excellent. Be careful. There's a lot of traffic. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, guys, let's go ahead and get started. In yesterday's class, we were analyzing this section over here, which was coming from 1.1, past tense. I would like for us to go ahead and move forward and take a look at the next section. Uh, choose the best response to the question. Let me have one volunteer. Number one, did she play soccer in high school? Did she play soccer in high school? What is the answer? I mean, go ahead, Juan Carlos. Yes, teacher boy manejando a, a casa, así que... Okay. I think it's B. All right, B, no, she didn't play soccer in high school. She played basketball. Excellent, okay. Number two, another volunteer. Number two, another volunteer. When did you graduate from college? When did you graduate from college? Number two, when did Ruth? Uh, good, good evening, teacher. Um, Sería, I, ¿cómo se pronuncia graduate? Así es. Graduate. Graduate, I graduate from college in 2005. Okay, so that would be A or B? Uh, B. B, okay, so yes. here we're gonna say graduated. Simple past, we say graduated. Repeat, graduated. Graduate. Graduated. With graduated. Graduated. Uh -huh. That's right. With at the end, we're going to say graduated. So the pronunciation in the simple past is it graduated, graduated. Thank you. All right. Number three, another volunteer. Number three. Go ahead, Fernando. Um, I began to study English two years ago. I think is uh, where uh, did no. you begin to study English? Oh, it's the third. Sorry. Uh, we're gonna do number three. Yep. First, and then we're gonna do number four. Okay. Where did you grow up? The the A. Where did you grow up is A. I grew up in Houston, Texas. Perfect. Where did you grow up? Incorrect. Where you grow, grew up? Incorrect. Okay. Number four, another volunteer. Number four. Number four, another volunteer. Yo, teacher. Okay. Uh, is first, when did you begin to study English? Very good. When did you begin to study English? I began to study English two years ago. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. Number five. Yes, 
Isabel? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Did you have a pet when you were a child? Yes, I did. Okay. So let's uh, look at the questions. And we're going to go ahead and move on. We're going to look at past tense, verb with B. Listen, please. Able to make positive can and everybody negative statements here? using the verb to be. Can everybody Additionally, hear? Additionally, you'll be yes. able to make statements yes, such yes. as, I was born in China. I wasn't born in the United States. Let me get started by quickly explaining this chart. First of all, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about this chart and we're going to quickly focus on the left side of this chart. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to make positive statements such as I was born in Argentina and how to make negative statements such as I wasn't born in, let's say, Mexico. The first thing that I would like to explain regarding this topic is one basic rule, and that's the verb to be. So let me uh, let me get to that. What I want to do is explain the following concept, and that is that the verb to be will change depending on the pronoun that you use. For instance, whenever you use the pronouns I, he, she, or it, the verb to be that we're going to have to use for positive sentences is was. And whenever we make a negative sentence, then we're going to have to use wasn't. So if we look at our example here at the top, I was born in Argentina. Um, if I use another pronoun, let's say that I use the pronoun he, then I will say he was born in Argentina. If I were to use the pronoun she, then I would say she was born in Argentina. And obviously the same thing whenever we make a positive or negative sentence uh, with the um, other um, pronouns. So if I were to talk about we, then we will say something like, we were born in Argentina, um, you were born in Argentina, they were born in Argentina. Uh, so let me quickly explain, uh, you know, what the structure looks like. So in order to do that, we're going to have a subject plus uh, the verb to be in the past, and then we're going to have some sort of complement. So the example is, um, I was born in Argentina. Okay. And then what I want to say is I also want to give a negative statement. So I want to say I wasn't born in uh, China. Mm -hmm. This is the uh, first example that I gave you at the beginning. Um, and what I want to do at this time, I just want to quickly color that. I'm going to color the subject in red and I would like to color uh, the verb in green and then the complement. I'm just going to go ahead and color that in a different color. It could be any color. The only thing that I want you to notice is that uh, we have a subject at the beginning that follows the verb to be and then that follows some sort of complement in order for us to make the positive statements or Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at some more examples. If I say to you, where, where were you last night? Where were you last night? A donde estabas anoche? Where were you last night? A donde estabas anoche? How would you respond to this question? Yes, Herbert? Yes, uh, I was in, in my house, but... Very uh, good. But I was I, I can, at home. But I can to answer, we, we were at, uh, at home. Yes, yes, we were at home perfectly correct okay good thank you uh, or if i want to say que comiste anoche what did you 
eat last night last night what do you respond uh, for example yo comí pupusas i i eaten no i ate i ate, I ate. I ate. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. pupusas o oh, quieres preguntar qué vistes anoche what did you I watch I watched last night what did you watch last night tú vas a decir eh, yo vi una película I watched a movie okay o digamos eh, a dónde fuiste anoche where did you go last night y digamos que por razón del ejercicio usted dice yo fui al cine I went to the movies o digamos quieres preguntar con quién estuviste anoche who were you with last night? Tú dices, estuve con mi familia. I was with my family. Okay. Any questions? Any questions? No. Yeah, excuse me. Uh, it, it, it is irregular, but. Correct. That is correct. Was is irregular verb. Okay. Who can give me one example with where? in the WH question and the beaver. Okay. One example with where. One example with where. Wendy, raise your hand. What were good last night? Uh, repeat, please. What were you good last night? Ah, que cocinaste anoche. Mm -hmm. Okay. In that case, it would be what did you cook last night? What did you cook last night? Everybody listen and repeat. What? 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 what did, did, did you, you cook, cook, cook last night? Last, last night. night. What did you cook last night? Did you cook last what night? did you what cook did last you night? night? Okay. Somebody give me an example with where where, did, where 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 did you go yesterday very good where did you go yesterday correct herbert another example marco yes and an affirmative question an affirmative sentence or a interrogative sentence uh, what do you mean after a positive or negative sentence. What is the okay, question? Okay. okay. I worked to Argentina. I were in Argentina last year. Okay. In this case, we're gonna say uh, I was 
I was sorry, sorry, sorry. Argentina. Argentina. Last year. I was in Argentina last year. Or you were in Argentina last year. Okay. And what is the question? How do I formulate the question? I would say, where, where, como se hace la pregunta? Where, where, where did you, were you last year? Where were you last year? ¿Dónde estuviste el año pasado? Excellent. Marco, let me have another volunteer. I want you to, oh, let's see, Leana, where did you buy that jean? Jean, okay. In este caso, sería, where did you buy those jeans? Porque jeans, a pesar de que solo es un pantalón, eh, en inglés es considerado plural. So, allí sería, where did you buy those jeans? Where, al principio siempre es mayúscula, where did you buy, aquí sería, those jeans. Si sería singular, where did you buy that jacket, for example. Good, good. All right, another example, somebody? Another example, somebody? Another example? Deme un ejemplo con... Who, who, ya hicimos uno con where, uno con what. ¿Quién me puede dar uno con who, who, en el pasado? Who, en el pasado. Uh, who was his business? I'm sorry? Who, no, oh, no, I'm sorry, no. Man, no. Oh, <laughs> ¿cuándo, ¿cuándo fue tu cumpleaños? Ok. <laughs> ¿Cuándo fue tu cumpleaños? ¿Cómo voy a preguntar eso? ¿Cuándo fue tu cumpleaños? When. When, 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 your, when, birthday. when, when was your birthday. When was your birthday. When was your birthday. When was your birthday. Ok, ok. Good, good. Eh, ¿Quién me puede dar una con who? Who? Okay, Saul. Saul. Who was your teacher last night? Ah, okay. Who was your previous teacher? Who was? Who was your? Previous teacher. Excellent. Good example, Saul. Who was your previous teacher? Excellent. Excellent. Good job. Okay, guys. Eh, veo que comprendemos este tema. Eh, now, what you are going to do is we're going to go to the next uh, section here. And you're going to complete this section. ¿Todos hicieron esta sección 1.5? ¿Ya la hicieron todos? No. Yes, yes teacher. Yes. 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 Ok, yes, escucho, escucho más yes que no. Lo vamos a hacer juntos. Eh, one volunteer, number one. I am. Raúl, ok. Ruth, number two. Eh, Carla, number three. Okay, Wendy, number four, Marcos, number five. 
Estamos esperando a Raúl, number one. Number one, he was born in Spain. No, vamos a leer primero la pregunta y después la respuesta. Which is the correct usage? He was born in Spain. Very good. He was born in Spain. And uh, number two. You should say my parents were in French. My, my parents were in France. Excellent. France. Okay. My parents were in France. Good, good. Number three. Number what three. is a grammatic? How do you say? Uh, that word? would be grammatically. 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 Okay. Grammatically. What is a grammar grammatically correct answer to this question? Where were you, you born? I was born in Mexico. I wasn't born in Peru. Excellent. I was born in Mexico. I wasn't born in Peru. Thank you. Number four. Number four. Creo que es Marco. Uh, no, I'm number five. Okay, creo que es Wendy. My wife, my wife and I were in Mexico. Perfect. My wife and I were in Mexico. Marco. The English quiz was a little a little difficult. The English quiz was a little difficult. And we are good. Perfect. Excellent work. At this moment, do you guys have any questions in regards to this activity? Questions about this activity? Okay. Let's look at the next one. Simple past questions with Beaver. Hi, everyone. By the end of this class, you'll be able Can to everybody ask here? and answer. Yes, Can everybody no here? And W yes. questions yes. Okay. Okay. to be okay. in the past. Thank you. Take notes. For example, you'll be able to ask the following questions. Were you born in this city? When were you born? Where were you born? So we're going to try to make sense of these two questions that you see there on the left. Where were you born? Were you born in Buenos Aires? And the first thing that um, I want to point out is the following, that we're still going to continue to follow that uh, rule that we learned in our previous lesson, which was that we're going to follow the verb to be, either was or where, depending on the pronoun. So if I talk about I, he, she, or it, then the verb to be that we'll use will be was. And whenever we talk about the pronouns we, you, or they, the verb to be that we're going to use will be where. Now, let's try to make sense of the different types of questions that we have. First of all, we're going to talk about yes or no questions. And that will be the second one that you see there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to make sense of that question, and then we're going to practice making a few. So um, let me start by writing down a formula. Uh, so the first thing that we're going to include will be the verb to be, and I'm going to go ahead and color this and let's say uh, green. I'm going to go ahead and color this subject in let's say red. And the complement, I'm going to go ahead and color that in something um, different. I'm going to go ahead and use um, I'm going to go ahead and use blue this time, right? Um, and so let's do the following. Uh, let me uh, write down uh, the uh, uh, the verb to be here. And then this is going to follow the subject. And after this, this will follow the complement. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and uh, change the colors there. OK. All right, there we go. So in order for us to make questions in the past using the verb to be, what we're going to do is we're going to use 
the verb to be in the past, either was or where, and I mentioned that we need to recall uh, this rule that we learned in our previous lesson in order to understand that. Then this follows the subject, and then this will follow whatever complement that you want to ask. So if you look at our example here, were you born in Buenos Aires? And the answer to this question will be, yes, I was. That will be the short answer. Um, and the negative response will be, no, I wasn't. And of course, this will vary depending on the pronoun. Let's say that I changed the subject now. And let's say that now I want to ask about he. So how are we going to do that? Well, first of all, we need to recall that whenever we use the pronoun he, we're going to use the verb to be was. So therefore, we'll say, was he born in China? And of course, we also need to recall that um, here we can um, use names instead of the pronoun. So was Mary born in China? Was Peter born in China, etc.? So what I want to do now is I want to talk about creating WH questions. And in order for us to create WH questions, we're pretty much going to follow the same pattern. So as you can see, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy and paste this previous rule here. And the only difference that we're going to have in creating WH questions is that I'm going to write some sort of WH word. And what are those WH words? Well, you can see the example that we have on this little chart. We're going to use WH words such as where, who, what, when, why, etc. That's what we mean by uh, WH words. And so that is what's going to um, be included at the very beginning. And everything else will pretty much stay the same. Um, I'm going to go ahead and change the color um, this differently just to make sure that we know what's happening there. So let me do that right now. Okay, there we go. So we're going to have some sort of WH word, and then that's going to follow the verb to be in the past. Uh, then it's going to follow the subject and then whatever complement that exists. So if we look at our example, where were you born? Right. So there we're, let me write the same one there, where the verb to be. Oops. And then this is going to follow the subject. and then uh, whatever complement. And then we have ourselves a WH question. And WH question simply means information questions, if you will, also if you want to look at them that way. What I would like for you to do now is to practice the concept that we just learned. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to post some questions here for you. And I would like for you to answer these questions and come up with as many others that you possibly Okay. For this activity, I would like for us to take a look at the examples that we have so far. The first one says, were you a good student in high school? Who was your hero when you were a child? And how old were you in 1999? So for this activity, I want you to come down here and we're gonna be looking at the practice, 1.8. Which option is correct? Were you a good student in high school? What is your answer? What is your answer? Yes, I was. Yes, I was. Number two, you born were city in this. What is your answer? Number three. Number three, were Number you three. born in this city? Very good. Number four, why favorite subjects were math and science? What is the question? Number one. Number one, what were your favorite subjects in school? Number four, which is correct? How many Number was two. Peter born? Number two. 
When was Number Peter two. born? And where was Peter born? When was Peter born? Number two is correct. Last one, choose the best question to match this response. I was 15 years old. Number two. Number, Number two. How old were you in 1990? Perfect. All right. Any questions in regards to this activity? Questions mm -hmm. in regards to this activity? Okay. Now, I would like for us to take the attendance. We're going to look at the attendance right now. So when I call your name, please stay present. When I call your name, please say present. Cuando diga su nombre, por favor, diga presente. Okay, the first one is... This one is Adriana. Present. Thank you. Uh, present, Adriana. Thank you. Carlos. 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 Carlos Maravilla o el otro Carlos. Uh, this uh, is Carlos Martinez. Ahí está escribiendo en el chat, teacher. Uh, Carlos Alberto Martinez, present. Okay, good, good. Thank you. <coughs> Claudia. Present, teacher. Thank you, Claudia. Doribel. Excellent. Esmeralda. Present teacher. Very good. Herbert. Present teacher. Thank you. Irma. Irma. Irma is absent. All right. Uh, Isabo. Present teacher. Excellent. Jacqueline Guevara. Absent. Jacqueline Cermeo. Jacqueline is absent. Okay. Uh, Juan Cubillas. Juan Cubillas. Okay, absent. Juan Maravilla. Present teacher. Thank you. Juan Maravilla. Eh, Carla. Present teacher. Thank you. Leana. Present teacher. Very good. Luis. Present. Excellent. Marco. Good job. Present. Maria. Present. Very good. Marina. Marina Martinez is absent. Okay. Uh, Noemi. Present. Good job. Raúl. Present teacher. Excellent. René. 
René. Absent. Roberto. Roberto. Ruth. Here, teacher. Thank you. Saul. Present teacher. Excellent. Wendy. Present teacher. Very good. So we have absent Roberto, Rene, Marina, Juan Cubillas, Jacqueline Cermello, Jacqueline Guevara, and Irma Jacqueline. We have a lot of people absent today. Not good. <clears throat> Okay, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the following activity. At this moment, do you have any questions about this topic? Questions about this topic? Okay, we're gonna move forward and we're gonna look at 1.10 statements with use to. Statements with used to. At this moment, any questions about statements with used to? Questions, questions. Okay, let's take a look at the video. El used to es utilizado más que nada para el pasado. Por ejemplo, usted dice, mi abuela me calentaba las galletas con café en las mañanas. For example, ¿cómo va a decir eso? My grandmother. My grandmother. Mm. <coughs> Used to mm -hmm. warm up. Quiere decir calentar, warm up. My cookies and milk in the mornings, por las mañanas. <coughs> so, usted dice, my grandmother used to warm up my cookies and milk in the mornings. Mi abuela me calentaba las galletas y la leche en las mañanas. O, for example, usted dice, eh, antes yo jugaba canicas. Okay? Cuando era niño, yo jugaba canicas. When I was a little, when I was a little boy, I used to play. Uh, marbles. <clears throat> All right. O oh, digamos, usted dice, cuando era niño, eh, me llevaban a Chuck E. Cheese. When I was a child. They used to take Chuck E. Cheese. <clears throat> Any questions in regards to this topic? Questions in regards to this topic? Anybody? All right, let's watch the video. Let's watch the video and take notes. Hi everyone. By the end of this class, you'll be able to discuss your childhood habits using used to. Let me give you a couple of examples. When I was a kid, I used to be very messy, but now I'm very neat. I used to have a lot of hobbies, but now I don't have any free time. 
I didn't used to follow politics, but now I read the newspapers every day. You'll also listen to a short conversation which illustrates how this topic is used. Let me get started by presenting some structure. As I mentioned, what we're going to do is we're going to try to become familiar with the usage of used to. And in this class, what we're going to do is we're going to become familiar with making positive statements and negative statements using used to. So here are a couple of examples that we want to learn. I used to collect comic books. I didn't used to collect anything, but now I collect art. Um, and I'm just borrowing the examples that are here, but of course I'll give more details about this in just one second. But the first thing that I would like to do at this time is that I would like to have you listen to a conversation and you will learn how this topic is used. And after that, I'm going to start explaining how to structure these sentences together. So let's do that right now. Let's listen to that conversation that I'm talking about. Thanks for taking the time to speak with me, Jerry. Oh, it's my pleasure. You have a beautiful accent. Where did you grow up? I grew up in England, in a city called Brighton. Were you popular when you were growing up? Not really. I wasn't unpopular, but I wasn't in the popular crowd at school. I had a nice group of friends, though. How did you like school? Oh, I loved school. I was a great student. My mother actually taught at my primary school. I always thought that was terrific. What about your free time as a child? Did you have a hobby? I used to love to draw. Later I learned to paint, and I still do that. Actually, I have some paintings in a gallery right now. That's impressive. Well, it's a very small exhibit, but it's something I really enjoy. Did you have a favorite game when you were growing up? I used to play video games a lot as a kid. The video games then were very different from the games now. I didn't have a favorite, though. I liked a lot of them. What about a favorite place? Hmm, my favorite place. I used to go to a summer camp in Ireland. I loved that. I got to go horseback riding almost every day. Do you still go to Ireland? No, not very often. Let me start by explaining this chart. First of all, let me just get the concept out of the way. Used to refers to something that you regularly did in the past, but you don't do that anymore. And let me get started by explaining positive statements. So what I'm going to do at this time, I'm just going to put the formula here and we're going to try to make sense of the positive statements that are outlined there for us. So what we're going to do at this time is we're, we're going to borrow that first example that you see there. So we have I is the subject and then this follows used to and then we're going to have the verb. It's going to be in the present. So I used to and in this case be. very messy, but uh, now um, very neat. There we go. So the subject in our sentence is I. I'm going to go ahead and play with the colors right now. Uh, this follows used to. And then we have the verb to be. Now this just happens to be the verb that we're using in this example, but it's not always going to be the verb to be. And then finally we're, we're going to have some sort of complement that um, uh, in order to finish that idea there. And so now let's try to make a couple of more examples. So I'm going to mention some of my own. So I used to, and I'm going to say I used to play a lot of sports when I was a kid. Um, and well, we follow the structure. Um, we have a subject. Then this follows used to. Then we have the verb in the present tense. And then we have some sort of complement at the end. Now let me present the negative structure. Let me present how we're going to make negative statements. So previously we learned that we can make positive statements with used to. Now we're going to talk about negative statements. The only thing that's going to change to our previous structure is that we're going to include didn't. 
All right, so that's what I want you to notice. And also, I want you to notice that used to will no longer be in the uh, it will no longer be in the past. And now it's going to be in the present, and that's because of this auxiliary verb that you see here. So we're going to have the subject plus didn't, and then used to will be in the present. It's not going to be in the past like we saw it in our positive statement. And the rest will pretty much stay the same. Uh, so the subject plus didn't use to plus the verb in the present, and then whatever complement exists. So in this case, um, we're gonna I'm going to go ahead and write uh, a couple of examples here. So some of the ones that I mentioned as we began the class. Let me go ahead and give another example here. I'm going to say, I didn't use to collect anything, but I do now. There we go. And there is one last way on how to express negative statements, and that is using never used to. And it's quite similar. So let me give you an example about this. I never used to play sports, okay, but now I play every day. So we can also make negative statements using never used to. Okay, so the subject plus never used to. And that's going to follow the verb in its present form. And then whatever complement exists. I never used to play sports. I never used to worry about money. I never used to play sports. But now I play tennis, just like you see on the example there. And the last thing that I would like for you to do is to tell me what did you used to do when you were a child? Did you used to play sports? Did you used to have a pet, did you used to play video games, and also mention the things that you didn't used to do when you were a child. So for example, I never used to collect anything. Alright guys, L who can give me an example of an activity that you used to do in the past that now you don't do. I or used to play soccer. Oh, excellent. I used to play soccer. Good, Marco. Another one. I used to ride a bicycle. I used to ride a bicycle. Excellent. Another example. I used to um, ride a new car. All right, I used to ride a new car. All right, I would like for you to work in pairs and ask the questions, what are things that you used to do that now as an adult, you don't do anymore? Or things you used to have that now in as, adult, as an adult, you don't have anymore. You will have five minutes to practice asking and responding. Five minutes, please. Hello. Hello. Eh, sí, este, creo que nos vamos a preguntar sobre como algo que solíamos hacer 
en, hace algún tiempo o Ok, empecemos. I used to um, drive a new car. Hi, Saúl. Hola, buenas noches. Hello. Hi, good evening. Who is going to start? Going to start. Repeat, please. I don't understand. Who, who is the, who's going to start to make the, 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 the samples? Yeah. I used to cook in the morning. Where about now? Where about now? No se le entiende mucho, Saúl. What about now? Um, you used to cook. Uh -huh. Como I used to uh, play soccer when I was a, a just a kid. Also, I used to painting. I used to dance my children. I used to the museum. I used to practice taekwondo. Okay, I used to uh, play volleyball. I used to read newspaper. I used to take pictures. I used to play basketball. I used to go a bus. Let me see. I used to drink coffee every day. I didn't use to Hello. drink soda.
Let me see. I used to. I used to drink juice every day. I used to play softball with my friends. I used to cook with my mother. Okay. Um I used to um eat eggs. I used to go to the beach every month. I used to like chicken. El didn't es para negar eh, lo que no, o sea, lo que no, no se, no se hacía. Lo sí. que no se hacía en el pasado, pero ahora sí lo hace. Ah, ok. All right, welcome back, guys. Let me have one volunteer. Let me have one volunteer. Share your examples. One volunteer. Your Noemi. Teacher. All right, primero Naomi, después Ruth. Go ahead. Okay. I used to play softball with my friends. I didn't used to play in my cell phone. I used to go to the beach every month. I didn't used to drink soda. And I used to play with my dolls. That's all. Perfect. Very good. Good job. Go ahead, Root. I used to read newspaper. Uh, comics. Uh, Inside newspaper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I used to read the comics. All right, nice. Comic section. You can say, I used to read the comic section. Excellent route. Uh, Saul. I used to go to the cinema. And but I, now I don't because it's. Hello. Eh, se le está cortando, Saúl. I think the internet connection. Yeah. That's okay. Sorry, That's okay. Sorry. Repeat, repeat. You can mm, repeat. Me, teacher. Yeah. I, I just I used to go to the cinema with my friends. And now we don't have no more cinema in 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 the in the place in my place oh okay <laughs> okay okay excellent thank you saul good example uh, go ahead wendy i used to cool in the morning i used to play soccer i used to go to the beach on vacation and i i didn't used to eat in the morning okay excellent excellent okay guys uh it sounds like you understand this topic pretty well um, i'm listening to your examples and it looks like you understand it so please continue working on the platform and we will see you tomorrow see you tomorrow Bye. teacher See you. One moment. Bye. See you. Bye. 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 Study, study, practice, practice. Teacher. Hi. Eh, yo mencioné de que me había inscrito en un módulo que no era, ¿verdad? Pero sin embargo me dijeron que lo termine y que haga el esfuerzo pues de aprender. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. Estamos a la orden para ayudar. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night.